As we lead up to Saturday's game celebrating 100 years of Memorial Stadium, I sat down with a man who spent 25 seasons as Nebraska football's head coach from 1973 to 1997. In part two of our conversation tonight, Tom Osborne reflects on his time coaching all those seasons and his legacy on Nebraska. You didn't even think you wanted to be a coach at one point. Do you remember a time when it kind of clicked that, okay, I think I can be good at this? So Bob Devaney had just been hired as the new football coach. And uh, I arrived here at the same time he did. Went over to see him and asked him if he would, could use a graduate assistant football coach. Because I'd gone to graduate school and thinking about going to college administration work. And, um, and so one thing led to another. And uh, here I am, 35, and we'd won Two, out of two national championships in the previous three years. And um, so we won a lot of games, but if you didn't beat Oklahoma and play for a national championship, it wasn't a very good year. Had some good teams and one thing led to another, but it, it was a little tenuous for a while. A lot of people thought maybe uh, they ought to look elsewhere. No, I know you looked elsewhere, Colorado being one of them. What kept you at Nebraska? Went out there and visited and it was the idea of probably going there. They were offering uh, more money and more incentives. But on the way back, I thought, uh, you know, they recruited a bunch of players, told them that Nebraska was a good place. How am I gonna stand up in front of those guys and say, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm leaving. And uh, just couldn't do that. Molding young men into good people first, um, good athletes second. Why is that always so important to you? Well. I think, I think coaching at its best is mentoring. The players did feel that we cared about them as people. And as many Husker fans remember, no matter how much Osborne tried to guide and mentor players, it wasn't always enough. In the case of Lawrence Phillips, the running back faced domestic assault charges against a UNL woman. It was then Osborne received a national criticism for deciding to start Phillips in the 1995 National Championship against Florida. Osborne saying he believes in second chances. In the case of Lawrence Phillips, the, the thing that I would have really felt bad about would be if we threw him to the curb, you know, because uh, I knew his family situation. Uh, he um, was fatherless and uh, his mom uh, more or less kicked him out of the house when he was 12. He was on his own, he was on the streets, and we, we cared for Lawrence. I visited him in prison. The other day I found three letters he'd written uh, from prison. Being a coach and, and holding as many roles as you did in your career, did it ever come with a cost? One thing that was difficult, and, uh, and, and maybe if I had a regret, it would be that it was so time consuming and uh, the average work week was 80, 90 hours. But I had a great wife, you know, Nancy uh, was uh, somebody who sometimes coaches, uh, coaches wives get so caught up in the thing that they're up and they're down and Nancy was always pretty much the same, good, good sense of humor and um, sometimes she would hear really negative stuff about me. Sometimes she'd agree with them, <laughs> so, but uh, she always took it with a grain of salt. You've held so many different roles. You were a player, an assistant coach, a head coach, an athletic director, a state politician, a friend, father, husband. When you look back, which role, which hat are you most grateful to have held? The role that I'm most proud of is uh, in my family, because our, our kids have always tur turned out to be really good people. They're people that are well grounded in their faith, and that's been passed on to our grandchildren. And, uh, and Nancy and I have had a really good marriage, and uh, so that's one thing. And then I, I probably the next thing would be simply the relationships with players and people that um, that I've known. We wrap up the conversation with Coach Osborne in a part three airing tomorrow night where Coach shares his thoughts on Matt Rule, the current Husker football team, and the future of college football.